Hey guys, welcome to Typical Tech Lad, where we get to see tech for what it is. In today's video, we'll be checking out the Huawei MatePad 11.5 inch S paper mat edition. Now that's a mouthful. We'll also check out the Gen 3 M Pencil, so let's get cracking. So, pop off the lid here. First thing we're presented with is a little card informing us of how we can get apps so no google play store on this device but we'll see how that pans out then we have the tablet itself have a look at that in a second we get a microfiber polishing cloth nice we have a warranty card user guide and some stickers with random information on it and then we get a usb-c cable and a charging brick which is two pin so that wasn't going to work here in the uk but i did get a three pin charger as a gift with the tablet take the protective sleeve off and i could see the nice map display Up front, we have the 11.5 inch display with symmetrical bezels and the 8 megapixel front camera. To the right, we got two speaker drills and the USB C port. Around the bottom, we have a 3 pin connector for accessories such as the keyboard, which you can purchase separately. To the left, we have two more speaker drills and the power slash lock button. And then to the top, we have the volume buttons along with two microphones. And to the right here, we have the connector for the stylus, nice aluminium frame. And we have the rear 30 megapixel camera with LED flash, which is raised. So you will get some rocking of the tablet when it's laying flat. For the M pencil, we have a user guide, warranty card and a spare tip. And then the pencil itself, nice ergonomic design, so it won't roll around, and then Hawaii branding on the top tier. Let's talk about one of the most crucial aspects of any tablet, that being the display. The MatePad 11.5S has a 11.5 inch IPS LCD display running up to 144 hertz refresh rate and a PPI of 291. And it is covered in, as Huawei put it, a nanoscale anti-glare etching technology, or in simpler terms, matte display. We can attach the pen magnetically on the top here and it links via the near link technology and will also charge via this connection. Peak brightness comes in at 500 nits on the tablet so about the usual of what we can expect. Settings we have the usual stuff here. Eye comfort kind of makes the screen warmer. We have ebook mode you can adjust it from black and white. Colors we can turn on and off natural tone or you can pick from normal or vivid. And then screen refresh rate, dynamic, high or standard. Standard will obviously save you battery, dynamic will adjust it. That matte display is really nice from a distance, but up close you will see some of that notorious grainy effect. Viewing angles aren't bad at all, with a slight shift in colour temperature as the only noticeable change. But other than that, you can see there's no reflectivity, no glare because of the matte display. 4K playback supported on YouTube. And 4K 60fps HDR is also supported, so that's nice to see. And the footage played nice and smoothly. For media consumption, it is a joy to use, and the paper matte display enhances that experience, cutting out all the glare and reflections, making it easier on the eyes, and providing a nice matte black image. On Netflix, we get Wide One Level 1 support with full HD playback. And again, the display provides a more natural, comfortable viewing experience with good color reproduction and accurate color calibration also. So we have four speakers on the tablet, which are Hisson 9.0 tuned, which intelligently switch to optimal sound effects based on whatever you are listening to. For me, the speakers were really good with nice, loud, clear sound and a reasonable amount of depth and maybe a smidge of bass too. But first, we'll have a look in the settings. I mean, I couldn't find anything that late. You adjust anything, so it's just kind of like baked in type of situation in this case. But you have your additional things like startup sound, screen lock, which you can adjust. But have a listen. And then we also have refresh rate, so we can either have default, which is recommended, and it adjusts based on the scenarios for balanced performance, or you can pick your own 60, 90, or 100 if you want to, 120 if you want to lock it. <laughs> post empowerment videos on YouTube. Empowerment videos? But, yeah, I thought YouTube went out of business. Ah, what am I thinking of? Circuit. 
Another aspect of the paper matte coating is to replicate a paper-like feel and using the stylus does indeed give you a slight impression as if you're writing on paper with that bit of friction you would feel. For me it was a joy, the pen was really nice to use, I felt like it was accurate but we can see the slow down footage, there is slight latency delay on quick strokes but in reality you're not going to really notice. And then you also have the Gold Paint app which is dedicated for those who want to draw and unleash the creative sign and it has loads of different brushes and many other features which will make painting on the tablet a real joy and we can also use quick actions such as this annotate function which allows you to take a screenshot and then you can annotate as you please under the hood we have the clearing 9000w at cpu running on harmony os 4.2 along with 8 gigabytes of ram as far as i'm aware we only get security patches and that's quarterly but I couldn't find any information on OS updates so take that as you will. And then just looking at the settings we have super device where you can connect different things, near link connections, Huawei, share with other Huawei devices, easy projection, VPN, print, printing, things like that. Biometrics is only face recognition and lock screen password. Geekbench 6, we got a single core score of 1169 and a multi core score of 3205, so not too bad. And then it's being the likes of the Galaxy Tab S9 FE and OnePlus Pad. On Antutu, we get 612,945, so reasonable score on there as well. And on 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test, frame rate was ranging from 16 FPS to 32, so not exactly the best, but again reasonable and then generally using the tablet we get all your your app switching for me using the tablet was fun it was all right it's nice and snappy apps loaded uh fairly fast maybe a second or two delay in some of them depending on the app and you can do things like pull up apps to create pop-up windows and I can see, you can see I've got two open here. You can have a third one run in the background. You can jump into split screen. Have that sitting on the side, pop in another app. And you can also push apps to the side, bring them back into view. Expand them. So loads of different ways to multitask on the tablet, which is a positive. So this is where I think the experience starts falling apart with no access to Google Play Store on here. A lot of the apps are not directly available and the app gallery which is where you would be getting your apps from and is built into the tablet has majority of the apps i'm going to search call of duty and no call of duty in this app store you can download gbox which will allow you to download additional apps but even there i wasn't able to download cod warzone which is what i was looking for and it did have the older one so i did manage to download it in the end via apk but the game wouldn't load it kept getting stuck on this screen no matter how many times i tried rebooting the tablet but it just wouldn't go past this screen so i tried sausage man which is another fun game would get past these couple of screens here and then this error would occur which is just a mumble jumble of letters to me and it would crash and even with asphalt 9 it looks like it's loading but then would crash and it kept happening each time I tried that so I just kind of gave up. I did get Genshin Impact to work so we'll have a quick look at that. I'm going to set everything to the highest as I usually do. 60 FPS and the game ran fine. It was good graphic. The visuals look nice on here. Again the display is a joy. So like I said, for my normal testing, I would have played a bunch of different games and reviewed the battery drain along with the FPS and temperatures. However, uh, the frustration not being able to download slash launch games frustrated me. So I gave up in the end, hence the reason I am only testing Genshin Impact. So providing the juice on this tablet is an 8800mAh battery which supports up to 22.5W wide charging with a compatible charger that is and also 5W reverse wide charging. 0 to 100 charge time comes in at roughly 2 hours so that's not too bad. But in general use over the last few days with my testing the battery did perform well. I got a full day and this was after doing all my tinkering around and you know running it quite a bit with benchmarking and things like that. 
even though I didn't do as much gaming, obviously for reasons stated previously. Other people that have tested using PC Mark have managed to get 13 hours on this tablet, so that's still a reasonable amount of time. But in the settings, you have your usual stuff, performance mode, power saving mode, you can have battery percentage, and other things like battery health. You can have your battery level displayed, and then you can have it connected while sleeping or smart power conserve. So in conclusion, I have to give the hardware on this tablet a massive thumbs up. The display on this is really nice and the paper matte technology enhances it significantly. The design itself is nice and thin and the curved frames makes it a joy to hold and is comfortable. The speakers are also another highlight with good sound making it a joy for media consumption. And on the software side, that's where it fell apart with not being able to kind of get the apps that I want. But if you're happy with not using Google services or Google Play Store and you can find other ways to download your apps, then you wouldn't have a problem. If you want it kind of straightforward and download your app straight from Google Play Store and you don't want to be faffing around with APKs and additional app stores and not finding apps there, then it does become a bit of a tedious experience. So in the end, I have to say the hardware shines, the exclusion of Google Play services brings about a bit of a dog cloud in my experience anyway. Enough rambling from me. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.